Hello my friends. Greetings to all Hearthstone adepts. We've spent enough time at Scholomance Academy to learn new tricks and strategies. We can finally draw more conclusions about the true power of new cards. In addition, this is the right moment to determine the worst predictions from popular students. We carefully monitored the metagame over the past month and collected statistics. Then we compared the results with ratings from streamers and the community. Thus, we were able to determine the most ridiculous assumptions. As always, before we begin, we ask you to respect the efforts of popular streamers and not to discuss their mental abilities. Each of them took a long time to give a short review for each card. Unfortunately, with each new expansion, less and less popular players are willing to review new cards. Of course, not all predictions can come true, but erroneous assumptions make card reviews interesting and fun. Let's get started. Shield of Honor gives a David damage minion plus three attack and divine shield. But those really are only applicable to warrior. For paladin, they're trash. In warrior, of course, um, we've got all these damage minions because of Risky Skipper, so it seems like warrior's gonna have more targets readily available, whereas paladin sometimes is gonna be awkward or really hard to actually get a damage minion to put this on, so real weird limitation there. Shield of Honor is excellent in the current Tempo Warrior type decks where you do a bit of self damage. But with all the rush minions out there, with all the damage Warrior can do, perhaps it does still find a home. There should be a great deck, I think around tier two. Shield of Honor is a three star card. I'm rating Shield of Honor, four star. Community rating, five stars. Shield of Honor received five stars from the community. According to the expectation of ordinary players, this card was supposed to be one of the best in the expansion. But that did not happen. You can hardly see this card in the meta game. But if you're really lucky, you might come across the Enrage Warrior, an unpopular and non-effective deck that uses Shield of Honor in certain versions. Cram Session here for Mage. Uh, two mana spell, draw one card that's improved by spell damage. Cram Session is an interesting card advantage card, but given that the only good spell damage cards are Lab Partner and Solarian, uh, that's not that many cards to hope for for drawing. Cram Session's a four-star card. Cram Session, one star. All right, Primordial Studies up next to your one-mana dual class for Shaman and Mage. And this one discovers a spell damage minion. And your next spell damage minion costs one less. There are a lot of bad spell damage cards. It's only recently that they've been pushing out a two-mana 3-2 with spell damage or one-mana 1-3 one, with spell damage. The old spell damage cards all suck. Our Primordial Studies, also one star. Primordial Studies is a three-star card. Community rating, four stars. <laughs> the opinions of popular players did not coincide with the future prospects of Cram Session and Primordial Studies. Despite the low efficiency of the Magician's strategies, these cards have become very important for most archetypes. Plus, the new and updated strategies turned out to be quite fun. The Mage is one of the most popular classes in the game. The popularity of these cards is almost 6%, which is quite a good result for useless cards. Adorable Infestation, two stars. Uh, Adorable Infestation, I feel like, is only good if you get it exactly with Gibberling. Community rating, four stars. <laughs> Trump grossly underestimated one of the best class cards in the new set. Adorable Infestation has taken an important place not only in Gibberling Druid but also in Face Hunter. Decks that use this card show a 59% effectiveness, which is one of the best results. Twilight Runner it seems good enough that it could help build the deck around it. Uh, I actually like Twilight Runner quite a lot. Twilight Runner's a three star card. Community rating, five stars. Next up here is Guardian Animal. I still think this one feels a little awkward, a little slow. Uh, demands a deck that's very centered around it, which I don't think this card's good enough to be built around. Guardian Animals is a two-star card. The general Guardian Animals deck for Druid, which I think is tier one. So every single one of these cards gets five stars. Community rating, three stars. Regis Kilbin underestimated the potential of the Guardian Animals and Twilight Runner. These cards became key to Guardian Druid. This deck became one of the most popular and effective decks right after release. The Kel'thas Sunstrider nerf has made the deck more balanced, although Guardian Druid is still the best Druid archetype. At the moment, their popularity is more than 7%. Apart from Guardian Druid, these cards are indispensable for Malago's Druid. Cult Neophyte. 
two for a three two battle cry your opponent's spell cost one more next turn i don't feel like the metal will ever be like spell heavy enough to run the neophyte unless there's some really specific spell combo this does not seem that good cult neophyte one star community rating three stars Cult Neophyte has proven to be a very useful card that has found a place in popular versions of different archetypes. 5% of decks use the miniature Lothab in standard mode. Ace Hunter Crane, new dual class legendary for Demon Hunter and Hunter. Or your other characters are immune while attacking. Oh man. I was gonna say it's like giving all of your cards Divine Shield, but it's it's better than that. Ace Hunter Crane, uh, perhaps slightly better in more tempo-oriented decks because if you have the board, when you play Ace Hunter Queen, you get so much value. If you have an even board, uh, and they just play some minions, and then you play Ace Hunter Queen, you just trade for free. Pretty sick card here across the board. Certainly, I think, a playable, competitive card. Has a lot of upside, so uh, both classes can use this one well. I think this card is going to be in every single Hunter deck. Ace Hunter Queen, five stars. Ace Hunter Queen is a four-star card. This card is not overrated. This thing is just crazy. Community rating, five stars. Ace Hunter Queen turned out to be another overrated card. According to ordinary players, this card was one of the top three strongest expansion cards. After release, he saw the game in some versions of Highlander Hunter and Aggro Demon Hunter. But every week he loses popularity despite good efficiency. To this day, it has all but disappeared from popular versions of these archetypes. It looks like the time for Ace Hunter Queen hasn't come yet. Glide, oh boy. Shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw four cards. Outcast, your opponent does the same. I, I don't know, I think this card's crazy. I'm not sure if it's like super good, but oh my God, does it counter combo decks. The crazy part for me is, you're gonna force your opponent to do the same. Seems like it could be great. Like. Oh my god. So you're basically going to remove six cards from their hand sometimes. If this card is average, then it's going to be played in every single Demon Hunter deck. I glide five stars. Glide is a four star card. I've thought about this. I think this card will be played a lot. Community rating, five stars. Glide is arguably the most overrated card in the new expansion. The high expectations of the community were completely in vain. Glide is used exclusively in low impact experimental versions of Aggro Demon Hunter. Moving on here to Cutting Class. 5 mana spell, dual class, rogue and warrior, draw 2 cards, cost 1 less per attack of your weapon. Cutting Class, also I believe a card more suitable to rogue. Not great in Warrior. So, um, I, I think a fine card, but it is going to have a little bit of trouble finding the right home. Cutting class, two stars. Cutting class is a three-star card. Community rating, four stars. <laughs> Cutting class has become a very important tool for both Weapon Rogue and Bomb Warrior. In general, the card has a popularity of over 6% and a very good efficiency, almost 55%. Intrepid Initiative. Get one mana, one, two, spell burst, gain two attacks. It's a one drop potential three, two. But the challenge there is right, you gotta play the spell at the exact right moment. It could slot into quite a number of aggressive decks, but ultimately my belief is that the one, two stat line is too weak. But anytime that whiffs, this card's really weak. It's just a one mana, one, two without any sort of additional upside, which I don't think is enough. And it seems like most decks are not running both small minions as well as small spells. I really like the, the mechanic here, essentially, but I just don't think the uh, playability is there. Three stars. This is actually going to be a contentious one. Intrepid initiates a two-star card. Community rating, four stars. <laughs> the high popularity of Intrepid Initiate came as a surprise to many. This unpleasant card found a very important place in the metagame. The current popularity of Intrepid Initiate is over 10%, and the deck efficiency in which it is used is over 58%. This is one of the best cards in Scalamance Academy. Tour Guide. In 1 mana 1 1, Battlecry, your next hero power costs 0. Tour Guide has been stated to be extremely good in a number of decks, but 
I looked at every single one of those decks. Believe me, I did my due diligence on Tour Guide. So a way to get a bit of a discount here on your hero power, basically a one mana discount and a little one one tossed in for free. So there may be some hero power shenanigans possible there. Uh, we actually just talked about the hero power draw card card, so you could combine all these things together. You could play it in face hunter in order to uh, on turn to play your face stalker and hero power and immediately get a secret. That is pretty sweet, but it does require you to draw the tour guide and the face stalker. I don't believe tour guide is good in face. Hunter. So late in the game when you're top decking, the tour guide is literally a one mana one one since you're pressing the hero power button. Even in worlds with like phase stalker and all these other hero power synergy cards, it's just it's not worth it to have to commit drawing a tour guide. It's such a big downside to have to run this card as a deck slot. Tour guide in warlock because Cobalt Librarian is insane, right? But Cobalt Librarian is a two one, and this is a one one. Furthermore, let me remind you that tour guide cannot double up with your hero power unlike cobalt librarian where you can play cobalt librarian and then use your hero power and draw two cards totem shaman i feel like this is probably the most legitimate use of it some people are saying oh yeah if you play it on turn one you could set up a guaranteed turn three totemic reflection but i feel like that's not really that good either you play your hero power totem you play your totemic reflection on it and you have two two fours woohoo this one little one one bonus just to get a hero power in to me does not seem worth it some people are like saying it's underrated i'm going to say the people who are saying it's underrated are overrating tour guide tour guides a one star card three stars tour guide looks really weak and let me also say that the three star rating is pandering to the bad players who are going to play this card across a number of decks community rating four stars <laughs> Tour Guide has become perhaps the best card of the new expansion. This little goblin made his way into the decks of Hunters, Shamans and Warlocks. A minion for one mana with one attack and one health plus free hero power turned out to be too good for many decks to pass up. As you can see, popular streamers sometimes make very stupid mistakes. Despite this, their predictions are generally more accurate than those of ordinary players. Finally, we want to ask you for a service. We've recently dedicated two videos to the new reward system, which is set to hit Hearthstone with the release of the new expansion in December. We criticized the initial balance of resources, but praised the idea as a whole. We've also hypothesized that Battlegrounds might be the main reason for the reward system deconstruction. Help us collect statistics by answering this question, have you purchased the current Battlegrounds perks? And the second question, how would you rate Hearthstone now? Assess the current state of the game as a whole. Please go to our community tab and take part in the polls. As always, we want to express our gratitude to our patrons. Dear friends, your support is invaluable. With all my robotic heart, thank you very much for continuing to believe in us. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for being with us. And special thanks to Chris for text editing. We will meet in new videos. Good luck.